I have uh, a wife and uh, two kids, a three-year-old daughter named McKenna, um, a 14-month-old boy named Boston, and uh, we got a third one on the way due December 9th. So, um, yeah, thanks. It's getting to the point now where the three-year-old is, is starting to express how she misses me and stuff like that when we go on the roads, and that makes it tough, but uh, you know, it's, it's, I guess, it's the way to make a living, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I mean, we play 162 games uh, in a season, 184 days. So we have a few off days in there, but uh, you know, 81 of those games are on the road. So that's 81 days we're not at home, and we're missing our families and, and our friends. And um, you know, if you're losing, you know, that, that makes it even even longer. So um, it's tough to balance. It's tough to balance both uh, the working and the and the, I guess, being a father and, and husband. It's I think the the biggest, I guess, tool set you can you can pick up while playing baseball is learning how to leave the game at the field. Um, there's a lot of neg negativity in the game of baseball. I mean, it's basically a game of failure, and whoever can fail less is is the most successful one. But um, not only that, you got you know you got all the negativity with social media and stuff like that, where fans are able to basically speak their mind to you, um, and you hear some some pretty negative things. But uh, when the game's not going well, uh, it's easy to take it home with you, and that's not fair to the to your wife and kids who. They love it for, for you. They, they look at, you know, my kids look at me as dad, not as a baseball player who happens to be my dad, so. Um. I, I had uh, quite a tough time because uh, there is a, a lot of changes uh, uh, within our club. So uh, our head coach is, uh, you know, swapping on head coach and, and we have new players coming in and some of the players is just, you know, kind of uh, unhappy and, and, and want to go away. So I have to deal with, deal with different situations and also have to also deal with the finance so, you know, area within club. So, uh, well, uh, that summer I really had a tough time and, and, and this led me to, to an emotional breakdown. So. I'm a married female professional squash player and uh, also as a South African squash player. So um, being married, I think it's the toughest part is being away from home, um, being away from my husband, and, and the different ways in which we deal with, with allowing me to be the best squash player that I need to be, and also, also being the best wife that I can be. Um, so unique challenges will be the communication aspects, and I'm sure what other athletes can also face in these kind of situations will be um, how you conduct yourself while you're, while you're apart. The issue of faithfulness can come up from other people. There's issues I think people face um, during travel or even arriving. Um, the idea of traveling can be difficult for a lot of players to deal with. The idea of loneliness can be difficult. And seeing how people and seeing how people embrace or deal with that. So, uh, so most players I find that before competition they can keep it together. But after competition, once they're out or have lost, that's often the, the telltale sign of how they're gonna um, how they're gonna handle the situation. So is it a case that people lose and immediately you see them drowning their sorrows um, in the bar and that's how they're gonna be coping with that? Or is it a case of their personality just completely exploding and how they treat the people around them soon after they've lost the matches? Or even in small cases, uh, in the process of losing, if they're seeing that the loss is, is, is in the process, how their character can change. When I started playing uh, professional football, just seeing the look in people's faces when I told them I was a professional footballer, or yeah, seeing the approval or, or feeling the approval once I scored a goal or I had a good game, and that started driving me in my formative years to wanting to play football. With that came pressure because I think um, I started losing the joy of the, just the purity of the game. I started losing that like, you know, when you play with your friends on five side and you're just loving the game and you're enjoying it. As you go to a higher level, as you go to a more elite level, there's pressures that come with that because now it's a business. There's pressure to perform, there's pressure to this pressure for results. Um, so with that pressure um, came, I started wanting, I needed people's approval. And 
and I started playing for people's approval. I started um, yeah, wanting the pat of the back, wanting the yeah, the people's acceptance. A lot I wanted um, the fans' acceptance, I wanted the acceptance of my coach, the acceptance of my teammates. So with that came a different type of pressure that I don't think I was emotionally and mentally ready to handle. I wasn't equipped to handle that. You can be rejected in one training session on a Monday and the next training session you can be accepted. So it almost becomes an emotional rollercoaster from day to day, which if you're not emotionally ready to handle, you need to find acceptance in other things. Or you need to numb the pain, or you need to just numb the storm that's going on in your mind. I know I can bore people by saying, but sometimes you have to repeat things to people. And there's no doubt about it in my mind that uh, you must always remember that however gifted they are in any sport, they are people first of all, with the same feelings as the, most people have. And then sometimes they need help, sometimes they need encouragement. Sometimes they need telling off, <laughs> and that's you know what sporting people are. They're good at us at one particular sport, but it doesn't make them any different as people. 